Hello. First off, I want to take you back about 25 years to 1992. In 1992, Denmark won the European Championship in football. It means that if you're a Dane over a certain age, you will know exactly where you were at that time. You will know whether it's like the American moon landing. It's the best thing we have. <coughs> so I want you now, I'm going to exit the stage and hide over behind that poster. And when I come back on stage, I want you to pretend that this is 1992 and you're part of that crowd and you get to see the winning champions. I want you to go absolutely crazy. I want you to get out of your chairs. I want you to yell and scream like there's no tomorrow. Can you do that? Yes. I see the, I see the enthusiasm. We're going to try once more. Can you do that? Yes. Excellent. Now, with no further ado, your next speaker, Mr. Klaus Russell. Yeah. Thank you. Now, we're going to do a further time jump. We're going to go back to 1949 and a man named Joseph Campbell. It's the one on the picture. Joseph Campbell in 1949 wrote A Thousand Heroes with One Face. He's a man who studies myths, or who studied myths, because he's dead now. Joseph Campbell's work found that almost all stories are based on the same stories. Almost all heroes are the same. Therefore, the title of the book, A Thousand Heroes with One Face. Or is it the other way around? It's the hero with a thousand faces. Fair enough. Now, this, how many of you are familiar with this franchise? One or two? Hmm? Star Wars? Star Wars is based explicitly on Campbell's work. It goes through, he has 17 steps that the hero must go through. And his point is that all stories, or, or almost all stories, are based on this. Star Wars is written on that. There is, you start in the real world, and then you get a call to adventure. Then you say, no, I'm not going to go do that. That's too dangerous. We're not going to rebel against the empire. Somebody kills your uncle. You go on an epic adventure. You meet something. You end up having the atonement with the father, where you discover your father is Darth Vader. And then at the end, everything's blown up, and you go home, and you find peace and wisdom and bring something to yourself and to the galaxy. Star Wars in a very short matter. A lot of stories follow the same formula. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, now a major motion picture, three major motion pictures, actually, follows the same recipe. This is Odysseus. Odysseus travels out. He does exactly the same stuff, just less lightsabers and less hobbits. But it's essentially the same thing. Now, all of these have one thing in common. They're passive entertainment. You read the story. You watch the movie. How many of you have watched Star Wars? We're not going to, you don't have to put your hand up if you're out in the live stream, but we're doing it in here. Up with your hands. Good. How many of you were in Star Wars? Aha, a slight discrepancy. A lot of people have watched it, have consumed the media. None of them were in it because it's passive entertainment. Somebody tells you a story, you get to experience it, but you don't get to be part of it. This is from Disneyland. It's also passive entertainment. It can feel exhilarating. You're writing Dumbo. Doesn't get much better than that. But you don't get to decide anything. You don't get to be part of it. You just get to sit there, be strapped. In Disneyland, you are physically strapped into the ride to make sure you don't make trouble. And then you get to experience. On a kind of grand scale, it looks like this. There's a creator. There's a consumer. And here is where the magic happens, the experience. Does it make sense so far? To find out, we're going to do a short test. You will see that to the left, there are pirates. You know what they say. They say, yar, and to the right, there are ninjas. And what do they say? Correct. They say nothing. They are very silent. So if you understand this, if you think this makes sense so far, I want you to say like pirates. We're going to do a short test to get your piracy kind of up and going. Can you do a yar? Yar? Yar. Good. Does it make sense? Yar. Significantly fewer, but still some people with us. That's good. And every one of you in your homes right now watching this via live stream, who did a yar, I love you. <laughs> now, how many recognize this guy? Excellent, it's a plumber, an Italian one even. His name is Mario. And Mario is something else, because Mario belongs to what is called a thousand faces. A thousand, I always get it wrong, and that makes it a lot less convincing when I'm talking about it. A thousand heroes with one face, because Millions and millions of kids and adults all over the planet 
have been Mario. They've all had Mario's face. When you sit down on your, it's not about the book. When you sit down on your Nintendo and you play Mario, you are Mario. You take on Mario's face, even though you are, of course, not Mario, which means that here you get to be Luke Skywalker. You get to be Mario, but you all do it in the same way. Everyone who has played Mario on a Nintendo has had roughly the same experience. They've all gotten to be the same hero, even if there are millions who have done so, which means that that's why we use the concept of a thousand heroes with one face. It's a little bit better. The Cave of Time, this is from the book series called Choose Your Own Adventure. More than 250 million of those were made. You leaf through it, you say, do you want to fight the dragon or, or flee from it? Go to page 83 if you want to fight it. Go to page 89 if you don't. And then you go through the book. So you get to be interactive. You get to have part of the story in your hands. You get to choose, but you still only choose between the pages. You can, of course, set the book on fire, or you can just throw it in the toilet or something dramatic, but then you don't get to the end. You only get to experience what has been created for you, but you still get some interactivity. This is from the interactive theater show Hamlet Live at Kronborg Castle in Denmark. You get to see Hamlet, but a different sort of Hamlet, where Hamlet is standing in the courtyard and says, I'm making a poem for Ophelia but guys, I'm a bad poet, can you help me out? And the audience supplies them with words, and since they're usually kids or tourists, they'll th say things like cheese or beer because they're in Denmark, and then when Ophelia comes along, Hamlet will say, Ophelia, you are like fine cheese, you make me sneeze. And she'll say, ah, uh, what? And then he'll point and say, it's, it's them, they helped me, I'm a bad poet, but it's their fault. It's still Hamlet, but you get to be part of it. Now, this is the Game of Sultans, a very popular app. You are the Sultan, and I have not played it, but as far as I understand, it's mainly about figuring out who you make your mistress and how those mistresses fight each other. It's a little bit of a weird premise, but it's been downloaded by millions and millions of people, so apparently that sort of thing works. This is how this plays out. There's a creator, then there's a consumer, then there's choice, and that brings the experience. This is interactive storytelling. It can be done in many forms. It can be done well. It can be done discreetly. Or it can be done where you think that you have interactivity, but in reality, you only have a little bit. And some people will try to make anything be interactive. But a book is interactive. You decide whether you read it. Very nice. Thank you. Now, are you still with me? We're going to try that once more. Are you still with me? Excellent. This brings me to the concept I want to introduce, which is a thousand heroes with a thousand faces. World of Warcraft, how many know what that is? Excellent. It is the biggest and most successful online multiplayer role-playing game in the world ever. And one of the reasons is because people don't have to be Mario. They can be whoever they want, interacting with whoever they want. Of course, somebody defines the game world. You can't be Batman or a lawyer from the 50s because this is a game about fantasy and death, and destruction, and magic, and elves, and orcs, and pandas. For some odd reason, there are pandas in World of Warcraft. But you get to be who you want to be together with others who do the same. Burning Man, less pandas, less death and destruction, but part of the premise of Burning Man, this amazing, crazy festival in the US, is that you get to be who you want to be. It's co-created, it's made by the participants. It's basically people said, let's drive into the desert yeah, that's a good idea, Carl. And what are we going to do there? We'll see who shows up. Yeah. Can we bring weird artwork? Yeah. How about some concerts and, and happenings? Yeah. And Burning Man only works because everybody contributes. Everybody gets to go there. Everybody gets to be their own hero and look their own way. The Conspiracy for Good is an alternate reality game done some years back where people from all over the world were searching in the real world for fictional villains and ended up building some schools in, I think it's in Namibia, something like that. It's a game where you are trying to uncover a fake conspiracy and end up doing real good. But instead of people having to choose who they're gonna be, they get to participate as themselves, but as a hero in their own story. And then they get to be a kind of a side participant in somebody else's story. So all the stories locked together and all these images are from people who are part of it. At the end of this, this is co-created experience. That's what all these things have in common. Now, this is from Road Trip, 
Road Trip was a trip across America with a fake rock band driving Route 66, playing real concerts, pretending to be rock stars. Here's a participant, here's a participant. Here are two more participants. Here is one of the organizers. It says creator, facilitator, all around guitar hero to show that the magic is mainly created by the people, not by the author, not by the author, not by the visionary. And this is a Photoshop eagle to make it look more dramatic because it's a promotional image. You know the drill by now. Thank you. Now, why does it matter? We're going to go to the 1970s. And this thing is terrible for my ear. Such is life. We're going to go to the 1970s and self-determination theory. Three basic needs. And no, they are not sleep, food, and shelter, though they are also basic needs. One is competent. We want to feel competent. We, as humans, need to feel that we're making a difference. Jumping over barrels feels good. And also, it's easy to learn. It's hard to master. We want to feel autonomy. We want to feel that we are in control. We want to feel that we can make a difference. And what we do is something that we decide. It's inside our control instead of outside. It's good to be the hero. This game, Rogue, from many, many years back, even comes with a boss key. So you can press a key so it looks like to your boss that you're working. There are few games about bosses. But here's a computer game that lets you evade your boss when you want to do something that makes you feel good, which is playing, not working. And last but not least, it has to be relatable. We want to do something that makes sense. We want to do something that we can feel connected to. For example, this is the computer game, The Sims, which is essentially about reality. Here are two guys pretending to be working out inside the game. Because working out is good, and it's a lot easier to do in a game than it is in reality. So no wonder, no wonder we want to play computer games or dress up as pirates. But what's the business angle? And I realize I'm fast running out of time because when I timed this, I didn't account for my own enthusiasm, and that leads to more words. So we're going to skip through a couple of things here. And then you can think about, what did he actually mean? The experience economy tells us that the future is not in products, but in experiences and transformations. This is not a technology thing. This is something that goes across all fields. We crave, a blah, we crave a variety of form. We want different things. We want books. We want movies. But we also want computer games. We also want role-playing experiences. We also want interactive theater. We also want to be part of the thing. Because participation is the future. And even though true co-creation is scary, it's worth it. The number 150 is the movie industry, 50 billions. Number 100 is the computer game industry. I have a lot more to say, but sadly, I've mistimed this. So instead, I'm going to say, 